Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's episode of AJ Tells You Everything You Wanted to Know About JavaScript But Were Too Afraid to Ask. This week, much like the evil kid who ruins all of the birthday parlor tricks of the magician, I'm going to tell you about how Angular makes its, uh, well, so in Angular you have a bunch of functions everywhere and you're always passing in scope and then like you can pass in HTTP or you can pass in location or you can pass in your user service, etc, etc. And then you can decide that you actually don't need location and delete it and keep your user in the same place and it just passes in the right thing every time, every time. And that's kind of disconcerting for a lot of people. This is black magics. Okay, I'm gonna show you how it works. So let's take a function, we're gonna call it say, we're gonna pass in um, who we're gonna say to, what we're gonna say, and who it's from. So a little console.loggy mclog log. Um, saying, hey, uh, what's your face? Um, actually, oops, I'm just going to plus there. And then say what you need to say and add an exclamation point for good measure. And then a little signature dealio. Who's it from? Hey. Right. So I'm going to put in my say here. I'm going to say to, um, oops, I'll get my keys right. Say to Bob, yo, what up? Need a little less grammatically correct there. That's great. And from Alice. Now I'm going to go over here and run the program that I just created. And you can do this in the browser too. I'm just doing it on my console because I like the console. Anyway, uh, hey Bob, yo, what up, Alice? Looks exactly as we expect, except some people don't expect that exclamation there, but that's their own fault. Um, now let's do a little something else. Console.log, this is where the magic comes through. Say dot to string. Right? Now notice that in the program I can print out the contents of the function. So let's use that to our advantage for a moment, shall we? I'm going to take that string of the function and pull out the arguments. So let's do var args equals um, I need to first get rid of new lines globally. I'll just replace them with a single space. Then I need to replace, uh, this is a little bit tricksy, but I want to capture everything that is not the beginning parenthesis. And then I want to capture the be beginning parenthesis, which I need to escape. Then I want to capture everything that is not the end parenthesis and then the end parenthesis no and then in the capture then the end parenthesis replace that all with just the matched part which is going to be uh, there we go from here to here no from there to there yeah yeah, that looks good. And then get rid of everything after that as well. And make sure that captures, these both need to capture every, all the things. Okay, cool. So that's good. And then I'm going to split that on any amount of space and then a comma and then any amount of space. Actually, that needs to be a star. Uh, yeah, and that should do it. So now if I console.log my args 
and run this again to what from great so now I'll make a little um, something to, to simulate the available pool of modules so let's say that I happen to have a module that's called 2 and I put in Bob and I happen to have a module that's called what and I put yo what up and then I happen to have a module called from and I put in Alice and then let's go ahead and put in stranger danger uh, ignore the little JS lint lines, JS hint stuff. I don't know why it's complaining. Indentation, whatever. Um, so now, obviously, I can index from my module map into arg0. And that will pull out, let's see, uh, that will pull out two, which will then pull out Bob. So this should log Bob. Did I not save it? I didn't save it. All right, so that also logs Bob. So now I'm going to make it that when I call the say function, it calls it with the desired arguments. I will actually change this to arg names and then I'll create another one that's args that's an array and I will loop over arg names and pull out of my uh, module map whatever so-called module that I want to use here and I will push that into args so now args will be full of the values rather than the names I will demonstrate that real quick alright so now we can see that I've successfully translated it now if I want to call say with those arguments, I use apply. I'm not changing, well, not am I not changing thisness, but there is no thisness, so the thisness is null. Um, if I had like user.say, then I would want to put user in here so that the thisness of user is preserved, but I don't, so I'm not going to worry about it. And then args, because I have an array of arguments um, otherwise I would use call but I'm using apply because I've just created this array dynamically um, so now oops, ta-da and if I change the order I can move the two to after the what And I can change the from to stranger. Oh, and then I need to change it down here as well. Oh, that's weird. Uh, right, oh. Cool. Now, that was relatively easy I mean this looks a little bit hairy but it's pretty simple to do so why not do this all the time and make JavaScript easy duh well there's a good reason for that which is that when you minify something and let me see if this minification demonstration will favor me with the error I want error parsing arguments in app.js I don't know what that means. Um, maybe I can't use the mingle option, which means 
Uh, let me try npm install dash j g j s compress. Maybe I get luckies. Um, nope. npm search uh, minify. Let's see what comes back. So the thing is, the new version of Uglify doesn't actually mangle the names the way that I want them to be mangled. Actually, maybe it does. Let me try using this. Which version of Uglify am I using? It is version 2. Ah, uh, well. Anyway, the, the point that I wanted to make, I can kind of show you. Um, even though I don't remember what the options are for Uglify. So here it happens to have kept all the variables the same, but what a minifier will generally do is it will change all the variables in their scope. So it'll replace what with A, 2 with B, stranger with C, and then it will go into here and replace, uh, what was it? 2 was B, stranger was C. So it would replace 2 with B, what with A, stranger with C. And then when it gets to the next scope, it might start over. So, um, in the module map, because it's a literal object, it's probably going to leave it uh, the same because that could get passed around or whatever. So now, if we take what appears to be arbitrary, because generally in JavaScript it's a safe assumption to say that whatever scope the variable is in is the only scope that they apply to. So it's safe to change the names of A, B, and C and the arguments of a function to conserve bytes as long as we also change the same names within the scope of that function. But since we were doing a little bit of magic outside of the scope of the function, um, let me run this minified one, we would get undefined, undefined, undefined instead of getting the things that we expect. Because now, when this whole string replace thing happens right here, it would be replacing uh, A, B, and C instead of what, to, and from. Obviously, that doesn't work. And that is why you can't do it yourself. Why does it work for Angular? Because Angular has a build step in which they take the function say, for example, they two string it, they do all that jazz up there. Um, let's see, if I wanted to construct the string that they construct, I would put a bracket and then I think I can actually do this with a map. I can. Uh, arg names dot map. So I'll say new fn equals that arg names dot map. Um, arg name, and it's going to be how do they do it? Something like this, probably. Sometimes I spell backwards. It's okay. I always spell item as time, and apparently, whatever I was starting to type on that other one. Um, so, oops, that's not what I wanted. All right, so it's going to get that, plus, it's going to get another comma, plus going to get the string name plus it's going to get the closing bracket. Let's see if this turns out the way I think it will. Console.log 
2fn. Ha! Huh. So this is the build step that Angular does beforehand because the quoted string won't get minified, but the what to and stranger inside will get minified to A, B, and C, but because in the build step they surround it with this array that has the arguments, then their function that takes in this function will check to see whether or not it's an array or a function. If it's a function, it's in development mode. If it's an array, then it pulls out everything except for the last argument, which is the function, as the arg names, and then uses that process. Um, so even in development mode, you can use this and be explicit, but you don't have to. And if you do use it, you may actually make more mistakes than you save yourself from. Um, the trick is just that you need to make sure that you run all of your code through the Angular build process first so that it will do all the wrapping for you before you minify. And then you're good. If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top. Give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.